Hey guys, Sean here. Welcome to the F1 Word and to the preview for the 2021 Bahrain Grand Prix. Oh my days, we are finally here, the first race weekend of a brand new season. I just cannot tell you how excited I am for this one. And seeing as I'm talking to fellow F1 fans, I'm guessing many of you are feeling exactly the same. Now, I have made a couple of tweaks to this previews for this year following your feedback in the community post I put out last week. So thank you to everyone who left a suggestion. I haven't put them all into this one, but I will be adding some others as the season goes on. But without further ado, let's crack on with this preview, starting for the first time this season with a look at some track info. So the drivers are back on the traditional layout, having used the outer loop back in December. And the layout is 3.636 miles long. That's 5.412 kilometers if you prefer with a grand total of 15 corners, six to the left and nine to the right. And come Sunday, there will be a total of 57 racing laps. Once again, this year, we've got three DRS zones and they are all in the same spots as last year. So down the start, finish straight between turns three and four. And then we've got one more between turns 10 and 11. Otherwise, aside from a few tweaks to the barrier at turn three, not much has changed since the last time F1 visited the track for racing and of course testing. So it is all very much as you were. And last time we had a race on this layout, Lewis Hamilton took victory from Max Verstappen, who also set the fastest lap of the race. And it was Alexander Albon who claimed that final spot on the podium. The race did finish behind the safety car following Sergio Perez's engine failure, his car catching fire on the side of the track. But of course, the race will forever be remembered for Roman Grosjean's horrific crash at the exit of turn three. A crash, quite frankly, I still can't believe he walked away from. Incredible. In terms of lap times last year, pole position was a 127.264, with the fastest race lap coming in at a 132.014, and the fastest lap we saw in practice was set during FP3, and that was a 128.355. Obviously, the event was run a lot later in the year than usual, although with it being in the desert, I doubt there would have been a huge difference. That said, it is worth noting that pole in 2019 was six tenths of a second slower than in 2020. Although it must be said that's unlikely to be as a result of the weather and more to do with the fact that last year's cars were generally faster. And just for comparison, the fastest time setting testing this year on the C4 tyre at exactly the same track was 1.7 seconds slower than pole last year. Shall we talk tyres? You know how much I love doing this one. But the compounds available this weekend are the hard C2, the medium C3 and the soft C4. Ah, I've missed that. And they are the same compounds that we used last year, although they are a new construction. So same nomination, but not totally identical. When it comes to driver allocation, though, understandably, but somewhat disappointingly, it is once again going to be the same for every driver at every event this year. So whilst the compounds will change from race to race, the number of sets that each driver gets will not. As was the case in 2020, there will be a total of 13 sets available per driver to last the weekend, with everyone getting two sets of hards, three sets of the mediums and eight of the softs. Maybe Pirelli will mix things up a little bit later in the year, but right now they are still looking at a standard allocation, so probably not. Again, from a logistical point of view, I totally get it, and this will likely be the case until the world gets back to some sort of normality. And perhaps it won't even be that big of a deal. But with so little variety when it comes to strategy, anything that can be done to mix things up in any way is always welcome. And drivers or teams picking their own allocation at least added something to a race weekend. And if you're wondering about the weather, I wouldn't give it a huge amount of thought. At time of recording, it is forecast to be hot and dry, as I guess you'd expect given the race is in the desert, with highs of 21 degrees Celsius on Sunday evening. But... It is worth keeping an eye on the wind because as we saw during testing, if it gets a little bit breezy out there, we could see a few more of those sandstorms. And according to official reports, sandstorms are a real possibility and could affect Saturday and Sunday with winds currently expected to reach up to 50 kph. Moving on and to something new for these previews this year. As you know, I love a good stat. So I've picked out seven more interesting, fun or obscure facts for you to ponder over the weekend. So, lap 9 of this year's Bahrain Grand Prix will be the 1,000th F1 racing lap of the circuit. According to Aston Martin, there is a total of 140,000 square metres of runoff and a whopping, wait for it, 1,120 palm trees surrounding the circuit. And the team also says that across a race weekend, they create enough data, the team, not the palm trees, 
to fill the memory of almost 28 laptops with a grand total of 220 gigabytes. Just three of the last nine races at the Bahrain International Circuit have been won from pole position and less than half in total have been won from pole. That said, the pole sitter has never retired from a race at the circuit, so that's something to be positive about. The furthest back on the grid anyone has ever won from is fifth, and the driver starting in 20th place has never scored a point at the track. And finally for this part, in total, 360 cars have entered a Grand Prix at the circuit with 300 of them reaching the chequered flag, and that gives an average finish rate of 83%. As always, thank you so much to Lights Out Blog for providing some of the stats for this preview, and I'm very much looking forward to working with them again this year. So if, like me, you love a good stat, then you can go and check them out by following the link in the description to their website. Now shortly, I'll pick out my one or ones to watch this weekend and attempt some predictions. I'm sure that'll go swimmingly. But before I get to that, who's on form and who isn't when it comes to Bahrain? I've picked out six drivers for this one, starting with Lewis Hamilton, who took his fourth Bahrain Grand Prix win last year and has actually finished on the podium at every race he has started at the track since 2014. In fact, he has never even failed to finish. So I think it's pretty reasonable to say that he can be confident going into this weekend. Definitely a driver on form. Sergio Perez is another driver who has generally enjoyed a good run of form in Bahrain. Of course, he won the race on the outer loop last year and would likely have finished on the podium at the other race had his engine not failed late on a retirement, by the way, which ended his 100% finish record at the track. Checo did also make it to the podium in Bahrain back in 2014 with Force India and has scored at a total of six events. Fernando Alonso, back for 2021 of course, has picked up three wins in Bahrain and holds a 100% finish record at the circuit. And the Spaniard has only failed to score on three occasions and they were in 2008, 2015 and 2017. Alonso has never been eliminated in Q1 in Bahrain and of course took pole position back in 2005 but hasn't reached Q3 since 2014. So Fernando has got some very good form at the circuit. Daniel Ricciardo, though, has had mixed fortune, I think it's fair to say, retiring in 2018 and 2019, but he did manage to score points at both events held at the track last year and has actually finished fourth a couple of times as well. The Aussie has also only failed to make it into Q3 on two occasions and they were in 2013 and 2019. Lance Stroll is another one with a mixed run of form. His third place finish at the Sakir Grand Prix last year was also the first time he had scored any points at the track with his best finish prior to that being 14th place for Force India in 2019 and Williams in 2018. The Canadian has also retired from two of the five races he started in Bahrain. And last, but by no means least, is Carlos Sainz, who's had a rotten run of form at the Bahrain International Circuit. The Spaniard finished fifth and fourth at the two races there last year, so they are the big positives, but he failed to finish in 2015, 2016, 2017 and 2019 and only managed P11 in 2018 when he was driving for Renault. Sainz, though, has made it into Q3 on four occasions, and I think, yeah, he'll be hoping his 2020 results were the start of a turnaround in Bahrain. That all leads me nicely onto my one to watch for the weekend. I've picked two out for this week. And by the way, if you would like to know which five drivers I'll personally be keeping a very close eye on over the course of this season, you can find a link on screen now to a video I did earlier this week going over them. But my first one to watch for the opening race is Daniel Ricciardo. This weekend sees the Aussie drive for McLaren in anger for the first time. And I think if it's true that the team looks seriously strong this year, as many are reporting after testing, he could well be one to spring a surprise this weekend. I'm not talking pole position or anything like that, not just yet anyway. But I can see him and perhaps his teammate as well worrying the likes of Mercedes and Red Bull during the race. And if there is a little bit of drama ahead, we could even see him nab a cheeky podium to kick off his season. Honestly, though, I'm just really excited to see what he can do in that car. And my second pick for this weekend is, surprise, surprise, Sergio Perez. He is a driver that a lot of people will be focusing on this season as a whole. But I am genuinely so fascinated to see how he gets on in his first weekend up against Max Verstappen and taking on those Mercs. As I said on Tuesday, Checo has said he thinks he will need five races to get fully up to speed in that car. But he did a solid job in testing and Red Bull look very strong. So perhaps he will be able to back up his teammate in Bahrain and maybe even be in contention for a podium. But to be honest, I think so long as he is in the mix this weekend, perhaps somewhere around fourth, fifth place, he'll be able to leave Bahrain relatively happy. I know that might sound a little bit odd, 
but he has only had a day and a half in that car. So for me, it would be unreasonable to expect him to jump in that car and instantly be on the pace of Verstappen. All of that said, though, and quite frankly, I could have picked any driver this weekend. I'm just so excited to see F1 back, and I'm going to be watching all 20 of them very closely this weekend. But perhaps Danny, Rick, and Checo a little bit more than some others. Right then, for the first time this year, let's do some predictions. As always, please remember these are just a little bit of fun, and you should really not be taking these too seriously. In fact, I wouldn't take them seriously at all. So I do not buy that Mercedes is struggling anywhere near as much as the team is claiming. Are there problems? Yes, probably, but I just cannot see it being a total disaster. So I'm going with Lewis Hamilton on pole and I'll say Max Verstappen will join him on the front row just ahead of Valtteri Bottas. And I'm also going to throw something else in here as well and predict that Daniel Ricciardo will outqualify Sergio Perez, but Checo will make the top five on Saturday. But yeah, anyway, as for Sunday, I fancy Max for this one, I really do. It'll be close this weekend, it absolutely will be, but I do believe Red Bull arrive in better shape than Mercedes does, even if I don't believe all of their struggles. So I'm going to say Verstappen for the win, with Hamilton in second place, and I think realistically and perhaps somewhat predictably, Bottas will probably end up in third place, but my wildcard pick for that final podium spot is my one to watch, Daniel Ricciardo. When it comes to the rest though, I am confident McLaren will top that midfield in Bahrain. But what happens behind them, frankly, is anybody's guess. But I'll say that Aston Martin will be next up in terms of most points scored. And I think Alpha Tauri will outscore Ferrari and Alpine as well. They look really good in testing. But again, as is the case most weekends, to be fair, but certainly with the first race weekend of the year, I don't really care who's on pole or who wins it. I just can't wait to see cars back out on track racing. And finally, super quickly before I go, here is a look at the schedule for the weekend. FP1 will start tomorrow morning at 11.30 UK time. All of these will be UK time, by the way. FP2 gets going at 3pm with FP3 on Saturday from midday. And don't forget, it's only one hour for each of the practice sessions this season. Qualifying gets underway at 3pm on Saturday. And on Sunday, it is lights out on the hour this year, don't forget, at 4pm. And if you are in the UK, just a very quick reminder that clocks do go forward one hour in the early hours of Sunday morning. I think that's it. I'm just very excited now to see what's going to happen this weekend, as I'm sure you all are too. But like I say, that is it for the Bahrain Grand Prix preview. But let me know down in the comments section which drivers you'll be watching very closely this weekend. And also, what are your predictions for the Bahrain Grand Prix? Who's your top three? Now, I will be back across the weekend with some more content. And don't forget to join me and Dan live shortly after the Grand Prix finishes on Sunday for the first race reaction stream of the season. But as ever, thank you for watching. I've been Sean. This has been the F1 Word. And until next time, goodbye.